right, welcome back, and we are continuing with our discussion here, and uh, we just took a little break to kind of put a, uh, a pause in the uh, material since now we're going to kind of switch over and, uh, and do something a little bit different. So <clears throat> now we're going to uh, go into what's called the frequency domain uh, from the time domain. So kind of everything that we've done up to this point, we've dealt with uh, signals that were a function of time. And in the last uh, part of this lecture that we just uh, went over, we talked about capacitors and inductors, and we talked about their transient response again, uh, kind of reviewing. But then we were looking at how uh, current and voltage uh, could lead and lag uh, inside of an inductive and capacitive circuit, uh, which is different than what happens in a purely resistive circuit. All right, And <clears throat> that leading and lagging is, uh, is called reactance. And now we're going to kind of uh, formalize that idea and we're going to learn about uh, a number of different uh, topics here, reactants, uh, phasers, uh, impedance, and complex numbers. So uh, so anyway, so this is going to be uh, kind of fun and interesting. And uh, let's just see where this goes, all right? So let's start. Let's get into our drawing program here, all right? And <clears throat> so the first thing that I want to do is uh, again so what we've been talking about is the time domain functions uh, signals as a function of time now what we want to do is we want to start just dealing with uh, signals that are sinusoidal signals and uh, what we know about them is their frequency uh, and we know their amplitude so <clears throat> so here's kind of what we're going to be talking about so we're going to be talking about we might have a signal all right and V of, uh, uh, v of t here uh, is the amplitude times the sine of 2 pi ft, all right, and uh, plus some phi here, all right. <clears throat> and now, so uh, the voltage is a function of time in this formula. <clears throat> and it says that it's the uh, variable a, which is amplitude, and times sine, and then we have this 2 pi ft plus phi here, and phi is would be this uh, kind of a what's called a phase angle. All right, so now uh, let's uh, clean this up a little bit. All right, so a, and then we never write sine like that. We just leave it like that. Uh, we take away the e. <clears throat> all right, and then 2 pi uh, ft plus this phase angle here, and this is kind of phase, all right, and this uh, 2 pi ft here, so f is, of course, the frequency, all right, in hertz, and time is t in seconds, and then 2 pi is just 2 pi. Now, another <coughs> formulation of this is we could say v sub t, actually, we can just forego that, and we can say a times sine of omega t plus phi, and omega <clears throat> is just called the angular frequency, and that's just the same as 2 pi ft. Okay, <clears throat> now here is kind of what we are going to, uh, uh, we're going to make a kind of a, an assumption here, and we're going to kind of have a convention. So uh, if we were to look at this function right here, so we know that <clears throat> this is a function of time, and so... Uh, we can we can plug T in here, and this we're going to get out this output, whether it's voltage or current or, or whatever. But uh, if we take time out of it, then we just have a, a certain frequency, or or we have an angular frequency, omega, omega. And so what we're going to start thinking about here is instead of thinking about uh, these functions uh, as a function of time, we we know they're a function of time, but we're just going to talk about their frequency and their amplitude. That's it. So. That's all we want to talk about. All right, so given that, uh, we could draw a circuit, and we could draw this circuit right here. <clears throat> so we're going to draw an AC circuit, and, and remember, it doesn't necessarily mean AC, out of the wall AC. It just means it's alternating current. All right, so we're drawing this circuit right here. We've got this resistor, a resistor R, and then here is uh, our AC source. All right, and now what we're going to say is, Let's say that this particular AC source is uh, 100 hertz, all right? And 
it has a magnitude of uh, a magnitude or an RMS value of say 10 volts. Okay, so now this is really really important. So because we're talking about sine waves now, we're talking about one single sine wave, and it's of this form here, right? And uh, we know uh, here's the frequency component, this f f here, all right? So that f is right here. That's the hundred hertz. Now this 10 volts right here, we have to be careful. So uh, if it's in this form right here, right, and we were to put a 10 here, that would be the uh, peak. That would be the peak value of this, right? Uh, if it's the peak value of that, that's fine. But a lot of times we want to deal with the RMS. Remember that, the root mean square? And so the root mean square uh, of this would be what? It would be uh, A, right, times... 0 0.707, right? That would be, put a times like that, A times uh, 0 0.707. So when we're doing these AC circuits, this is really, really important, and we don't even know what we're doing yet, but we're going to get there in a minute. When we're doing these AC circuits and doing these kind of calculations, the whole idea is we want to be able to process sinusoidal signals and understand how they, uh, what they do in uh, circuits that have resistors, capacitors, and inductors. But we have to make sure what we're talking about when we say this 10 volts here, does it mean the peak value or does it mean the RMS value? Does it mean something else? And typically it just means the RMS value uh, most of the time, unless otherwise stated that it might mean the peak value. But whether it means the peak value or the RMS value, you have to remember that because as you do calculations, everything is going to be either RMS or peak when you're talking about voltage and current in that same circuit. All right. Okay. So, <clears throat> so in this case, Let's just say that uh, this is 10 volts and it's an RMS value, all right? So it's just RMS, okay. All right, so now what's gonna happen is uh, we are gonna get, <clears throat> as this AC uh, signal uh, operates, right? We are gonna get something that looks like this. We're gonna get an AC signal, all right? And it's gonna go up and it's gonna go down, it's gonna go up and it's gonna go down, all right? And the rate at which it's going up and down, the frequency, right, equals 100 hertz. So that means if we were to take one, one cycle of this, right, one cycle of that from uh, here to here, right, one cycle of that, <clears throat> that would be the period, and that would be 1 over F, right? All right, and then this amplitude here, from here to here, that is this, uh, that would be the peak value, right? That would be the peak value. And then the RMS value would be 0.707 of that, right? So RMS, right, would be 0.707 and it would be, you know, someplace around here or whatever. All right, so this 10 volts is the RMS value. So that's that's all we need to kind of know about that. All right, now, now things are going to, now things are going to get interesting. All right, so let's, uh, Let's use, uh, we'll use, we'll use red and blue here as a current going in two directions. All right, so in the uh, positive cycle, when this uh, AC circuit, uh, when this voltage V, we'll call this, and we can still call this VS, when the voltage V is positive uh, in, in, uh, in this case, we're going to get a current like this, all right? And we're going to get a, a voltage drop uh, VR over this resistor, right? And the uh, the voltage drop <clears throat> over this resistor, all right, is is always going to be the source voltage because there's nothing else in here. Okay, so that's one thing. And this current here, which we could call this I, all right, or we could call this IR. So the current, uh, if we look at uh, Ohm's law again, it's V equals I times R. So in this case, uh, I is going to equal what? It's going to equal this VS over R. All right. Now, in a resistor. Uh, current and voltage, these two things, are always in phase, right? They're always in phase. So what that means is, is that uh, if we, when we're talking about the capacitor and the inductor, we figured out that uh, current and voltage were not in phase. So as, you know, it developed a voltage, uh, then, then 90 degrees later, current would flow, or as current would flow 90 degrees later, a voltage would, would be developed in the inductor and capacitor, all right, respectively. All right, so, but in the resistor, uh, current and voltage are in phase with each other. So <clears throat> if we look at this graph right here, and, uh, and then we say that, uh, and again, let's, to make colors here kind of the same, 
we'll say that if uh, if this is I right here, right? If this is I, all right, and then let's make a blue will be uh, the voltage, all right? And so uh, depending on what the resistor is here, but we'll we'll just kind of draw these like like this. As a matter of fact, let me do this. So I'm going to make the I'll make the voltage uh, bigger just to make it easier to see. All right. So, so the blue <clears throat> trace is the voltage, right? And so the voltage and the current are 100% in phase. They're directly in phase, but their amplitude differs, and their amplitude differs by this factor R, right? Because that's the resistance in the circuit. So they are in phase. Now, so that said, let's talk about something. So let's talk about something. So uh, in this case here, so let's say uh, voltage, so let's write the formula for voltage here. So uh, V sub S, all right, uh, equals uh, 100 hertz, all right, and uh, at 10 volts. And this is 10 volts RMS, all right. Now, what does I equal, all right, or I sub R? Well, I equals V sub S over R, all right. So V sub S is 10 volts over the R. <clears throat> and the R, in this case, we could say, uh, why don't we just say R equals 2 ohms. So 2 ohm. So we get, five, uh, we get 5 amps. Now, remember, this is not, uh, this, this 5 amps right here, right, is also changing, right? So this is changing as a function of time, and it's, so it's 5 amps RMS. Now, can we write down can we write down uh, what the uh, what the values are of these things as functions of time? Sure. All right. So so v of s uh, sub t if we wanted to equals and now uh, we need if we want to do this uh, this kind of you know sine uh, sine formula here. So we need something that the RMS would be 10 volts for the voltage source. So the RMS is 10 volts, right? So we need to Take our calculator. We see 10 times uh, 0.707. Excuse me. 10 times. So we know that. Let's let's write this down because I want you to be able to see this. So we know that uh, 10 volts equals the RMS. All right. And uh, the RMS equals peak uh, times 0 0.707 equals 10 volts. Therefore, the peak equals the 10 volts divided by 0 0.707, right? That's what we want, the peak or the amplitude. So if we take 10 divided by 0 0.707, <clears throat> then we're going to get 14.14 14, uh, equals 14.14 14 volts. So now if we compute the RMS of that times 0 0.707, we get 10. All right, so 14.14. 14. So what we really have here is 14.14 14 times the sine, all right, and then we have 2 pi f. What's our f here? It's 100 hertz, all right, 2 pi f, and then t, all right, <clears throat> and then there is no phase shift, so the angle is zero, all right. Now we want uh, I here, and this is, uh, there's only one I in the circuit because there's only this one resistive element here, and we could call it I, we call it I sub R, we'll just call it I, <clears throat> and I sub t equals so now all we need to do is it's going to be completely in phase with this, and it's the exact same other than uh, we need to divide here. So uh, because uh, this 10 divided by 2 gave us 5 amps uh, RMS here, we, we need the peak value of the current. But since we have the peak value of the voltage here, we can divide that by 2 and, and actually get our answer. So 14.14 14 divided by 2, because it's all linear, is 7.07. 7.07 sine 2 pi 100 t plus 0 again, all right? So that is Vs uh, and I. So they're both in phase, all right, in this circuit. And uh, that's what is always going to happen for a resistive element. They're both going to be in phase, all right? So for resistors, current and voltage are in phase. Now, so let's take a look at how we might be able to represent that. So again, let's uh, draw our little AC source. Let's draw our resistor here. 
all right? And this is V sub S, and it's at some frequency F, right? And then this is uh, some value R. All right, <clears throat> so now how we, uh, how we represent these in, in one way is uh, with what's called a phasor diagram. And a phasor diagram shows the phase of uh, the voltage and current, or it can show uh, the relationship of other things. Because everything in the circuit is at the same frequency, we don't need to worry about that, right? So frequency is, is not important. So uh, a phasor diagram, it's typically drawn like this in a polar coordinate system. All right, and now this is typically zero degrees right here. And this is kind of the reference. So this is the reference, all right? And again, depending on how you want to do this, uh, you can use some, one thing, uh, one value as a reference, and then everything goes off that. So you could say, here's the current, and then the voltage is ahead of it or behind it, it and so forth, right? That would be a reference. So typically, uh, when you're doing these phasor diagrams, when you're talking about voltage and current, uh, you might put the uh, current as the reference, all right? So let's go over here, <clears throat> and let's say that, uh, you know, here the, there's a current that's going to flow, and we're going to call that I, all right? And uh, this Vs, this is going to be this voltage, uh, you know, plus to minus this uh, this Vs. So uh, we can uh, label that in blue here. All right. And so we're going to have this current I. And how we, uh, how we draw this, this is a polar coordinate system. So what that means is you start off with the length of uh, your, your object, your, its magnitude, all right? And then you rotate it around uh, counterclockwise, right, uh, for positive angles uh, to find a position. So we're going to say that I is our reference, all right, or the current is our reference. All right, so we're going to draw I. And we're just going to imagine that this is the length uh, of its magnitude. All right, so here's I right here. All right, <clears throat> and now <clears throat> in this case, uh, V we know for a purely resistive circuit is in phase with uh, I, right? Because we just did that. And because it's in phase with it, it's going to literally be right on top of it. So now we just go here and then we draw and whatever its length is, right? and it would be the blue one, and that would be V. All right, so there's I and V. So they're totally in phase with each other. And so you could think of the phasor diagram. It's rotating around at a frequency F, right, or uh, an angular velocity omega, right? And remember, uh, omega equals 2 pi F, right? And so it's rotating around. So, so since we know it's rotating around at F and that never changes, we can just not pay attention to that. We can throw that away and just think of it as a snapshot in time, and we're only looking for the re the relationship between V and I, okay? <clears throat> now, so <clears throat> uh, this is for a resistor, all right? So the phase diagram for resistor, V and I are in phase, all right? So what that means is, if you want to ever compute, if you want to ever use uh, Ohm's law, V equals I times R, right? This will work completely fine and you don't have to do anything weird or funny or take anything into consideration. It just works because they're both in phase. With capacitors and inductors, uh, current and voltage are not in phase. And because they're not in phase, this works, but you got to be careful, right? And uh, you have to start taking into, cons into consideration what's called uh, reactance and impedance, all right? And we're going to get to that in one second here. But let's keep drawing here. So this is for the resistor. Okay, now <clears throat> now let's go over here and let's uh, let's draw something for the capacitor. All right, let's draw something for the capacitor. All right, again, this is our zero degrees reference. All right, and remember these are polar coordinates, so they're rotating around. So when you draw something in a polar coordinate, you start it off and then you rotate it around, and the length of it is the magnitude, and then the angle is uh, is uh, is drawn uh, counterclockwise. Okay. So in the capacitor, what did we learn? Capacitor, capacitor. <clears throat> okay, we learned uh, that we learned this little thing right here, ice. All right, and that means that the current leads uh, the voltage. Current leads voltage, right? Remember E stands for voltage also. So current leads voltage. Let's just write that down so we can remember it. Current leads voltage. 
right? <clears throat> and it actually leads it by 90 degrees, all right? So the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. All right, so let's get out our, uh, our little uh, drawing things here. So first, let's draw what this uh, might look like. So uh, I'm just going to kind of draw it right here. I'll draw it right here. So we got the same thing. We've got our little AC source, and we've got our capacitor here. All right, and then we've got our uh, V here. All right, we've got our V, <clears throat> or we call it VS, and then we've got our capacitor C here. And then we're going to have a current, and remember, uh, this current is going to flip back and forth uh, each direction, right? This is AC that we're talking about right here. And again, this is at some frequency F, but we don't care. If you notice that in these uh, phasor diagrams, there is no frequency because it could be one hertz or a billion hertz. It doesn't really matter. This is a snapshot, uh, and all we care about is magnitude of signals and their phase. All right. Now, so in this case, it says a uh, current leads voltage by 90 degrees. So the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. All right. So since we want to uh, put the uh, current uh, current phasor uh, as the reference at zero degrees, what we'll typically do is draw, again, the current phasor here, and then whatever its magnitude happens to be, right? And we don't know how to compute the magnitude of this yet. We don't know what the resistance of a capacitor is. We don't know what that is yet, right? We sort of know, but we don't know exactly. And, and actually, the re resistance is a thing called reactance, and, and we're going to learn it in just a second. But we really don't know. So we really don't know the length of it. But we know that uh, the current is, we're going to set that arbitrarily at zero degrees, because this is just all, everything is a reference to something else. But we do know that current leads voltage by 90 degrees. All right, so if we want the current to lead the voltage, the phase angle between the current and the voltage better be 90 degrees. All right, so if positive angles are this way, so if positive angles uh, are counterclockwise, right? So up here, this would be 90 degrees, right? That would be a positive angle, all right? But uh, the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. So what we have to do, we've got to put it down here. So this is our uh, VS here. All right, so now we're always rotating, you know, in this direction here, right? And so this would be 90 degrees. So the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. We just happen to align the current at zero degrees here. So the voltage is at minus 90 from the current, or the current is at plus 90 from the voltage, however you want to think of that. Either way, current leads the voltage by 90, and it does, and here is the, uh, the phasor diagram for that. Okay, so that's interesting. So now take a look. On the resistor, on the resistor, current and voltage are in phase, and they're both along the reference axis here. On the capacitor, right, uh, if, we, if we align the current uh, phasor to the horizontal axis so that everybody has the same reference, notice that its uh, voltage is 90 degrees, you know, lagging this current. So current's leading or uh, the voltage is lagging, whichever way you want to think of it. All right. So if we were to superimpose these, we would see that the capacitor voltage would be down here, right? So hold on to a second, and we're gonna we're gonna get to that. All right. Now let's uh, let's uh, now let's let's throw an inductor in here. Okay. So let's throw an inductor in here, uh, and uh, let's see. Can we do it right here? How about that? So let's do an inductor right here. So here's an inductor. And uh, again, we're going to have a, a circuit similar to this, except we're going to have an inductor there. So let's, uh, let's draw our phasor diagram again. OK. All right, there's our phasor diagram. OK, here's 0 degrees. And remember, remember, keep this in mind, this is a polar kind of coordinate system, right? So each one of these circles you could think of these horrible circles. It's just a different radius, right? Each one is a different radius, right? That's the magnitude. And then from any, you know, from any, oops, from any line to any other line, there's some angle in their phi, right? All right. So remember, it's it's kind of a polar coordinate system currently, right? And we're going to modify that a little bit. All right. Now, uh, we want to draw our uh, inductive circuit, all right? So, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to do it here just to save space. So here's this. 
and then we've got an inductor. All right, and then again, I'm going to call this VS. All right, this is our inductor L. Again, all right, and we're going to get a current in here, and this current is going to go back and forth, right, in both directions, right, because we've got a uh, alternating uh, current signal, right? So, uh, so the question is, what goes on in here, right? Well. Now, what did we learn? Uh, for the inductor, we learned, remember, we learned, uh, what is it, LE, and we learned Y, right, because the charge, charge and uh, charge is moving, voltage, this and that, and in both cases, we kind of went through it in the last lecture and the previous one before. So in this case, voltage, E, remember, E also stands for voltage, uh, voltage uh, leads current, and L does not stand for lead, it just stands for inductor, it's the order of these. So if this was I, L, E, then it, we would say current leads voltage, but it's not. It's E, L, I, so voltage leads current. Voltage leads current. All right, so the voltage leads current, and it always is by 90 degrees. So in the inductor and the capacitor, the current and the voltage relationship, they're 90 degrees out of phase, or pi on 2. Let's write that down. 90 degrees equals pi over 2, right? So if you like degrees, that's that. Degrees, right? And if you like radians, right, it's pi over 2 radians, right? Okay, so the voltage leads the current. Now, uh, when we do phasor diagrams, what do we like uh, to do with the current? We like to put it on the reference axis of 0 degrees so that we just have something to reference it with. And also, then it's the same as all resist developments, right? Okay, so let's put our current right here. Now, we don't know how to compute the uh, current here because we don't know what the resistance of an inductor is, right? We know it's transient response, but we don't have something for its resistance. Again, this is this concept called reactance, and we're going to talk about it very shortly uh, and exactly what the formula is. But for now, we know that there's something that's analogous to resistance in ohms, and it's called reactance, and, uh, but we don't know exactly what it is yet. All right, so this is I. Okay, now here is the cool part. So in the capacitor, in the capacitor uh, here, we have the uh, current, right, is leading the voltage by 90 degrees. And here, the voltage is leading the current, right? So it's the opposite. So uh, in this case, we have the uh, voltage, right, is leading the current. So the voltage is going to be up here by 90 degrees, right? And remember, each one of these quadrants, right, that's 90 degrees, right, and there's another 90 degrees, right, and there's another 90 degrees, right, and there's another 90 degrees, just a 360 degree circle, right, and again, uh, if you're just rusty, right, 360 equals 2 pi radians, right, 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians, right, okay, all right, so, and then this is our voltage here, okay, so, okay, now, so take a look at this. This is pretty cool. So now we've got the resistor, we've got the capacitor, we've got the inductor. We've got their phasor diagrams for their voltage and their current. Now their magnitudes are going to depend on the values of the resistor, uh, the capacitor, the inductor, and the frequency, and that's what we're going to learn. The resistor, now this is cool, in the resistor circuit, right, in the resistor circuit, the uh, voltage and current are in phase, and the relationship between voltage and current is simply V equals I times R. There is no F in here. There's no frequency. They're not frequency dependent. So they're frequency invariant, so that means that no matter what the frequency is, the relationship is always going to be V equals I times R. But in the capacitor and the inductor, we know that uh, the uh, these devices are time dependent, and so frequency and time are related, obviously. So something is going to go on here, uh, and as frequency changes their uh, their uh, their resistance, which we're going to learn, we're going to call reactance, uh, definitely changes. All right, so we're going to get to that in one second. But what I want to bring your attention to is that. Uh, if we take all three of these and we overlay them, right? So look at this. So let's uh, so if we overlay all three of these, okay, and let's do this. So on the uh, resistor, right? So we'll say resistor. Now let's say resistor uh, plus uh, L plus C, okay? All right. So this is going to be V of uh, of the uh, resistor, okay? Now let's call this one V of the inductor. All right, and then we'll call this one here, where are we here? We'll call this uh, V of the capacitor. All right, so the voltage of the inductor is up here someplace. See that? 
There we go. So there's the voltage of the inductor. And then the voltage of the capacitor is down here someplace. Look at that, exactly down here. Now remember, we don't know their lengths yet because we don't know how to compute their resistance or reactance, but we're getting there. So what's interesting about this is we have this coordinate system. Uh, the resistor, its current and voltage are in phase, but the inductor and capacitor, their voltages are out of phase with the current. All right, in, in each one respectively. And how much are they out of phase? By exactly 90 degrees. So in this case, this is plus 90. And in this case, this is minus 90 degrees, right? Or you could wrap it all the way around and say plus 270, right? So the uh, voltage is 90 degrees ahead of the uh, current in the inductor. And in the capacitor, the voltage lags by 90 degrees, right? So if we wanted to write, a, uh, wanted to write those equations, the sine uh, equations for the currents and voltages, we would get something like this. So for the, uh, say if we had a reference voltage, right, in the capacitor, right, and I'm just going to, for now, I'm just going to kind of fudge this. I'm just going to say, say that it was a sine of, you know, 2 pi F, right? And say that was the voltage of the, the capacitor. Voltage of the capacitor is like that, right? So if we look here, where's the capacitor? So the voltage of the capacitor is here, right? And so that means that the current is leading it by 90 degrees, right? So the current in the capacitor, and there's going to be some number, some, some scale here, A, okay? Equals, and we'll call this B, uh, sine 2 pi F plus 90 degrees, there you go, plus 90 degrees. So the current is leading the uh, voltage on the capacitor by 90 degrees. So these things would be identical other than uh, scale, right? Because they have, they're related by Ohm's law in a special way, which we're gonna learn in a second. But they're the same frequency, right? That's why we don't put frequency in these diagrams. The only thing that they're different is by 90 degrees, right? They differ by 90 degrees because uh, the capacitor and the inductor are what are called reactive components, all right? So now let's segue into this idea of reactance. So here's the thing. An inductor or a capacitor never, ever, ever dissipates energy, ever. A perfect one. So the resistor does because the voltage and the current are in phase, right? But the capacitor, what does the capacitor do? It charges up with charge. And then when you flip the power around, then it uh, it, it uh, dissipates that charge. That charge then flows out of it. Charge flows in, charge flows out. Charge flows in, charge flows out. And even better, we see that the current and the voltage are never, ever in phase. So if current and voltage are never in phase uh, uh, at all, they're 90 degrees out of phase, right? Then power can never be dissipated. Do you remember back many lectures ago when we were talking about AC a, a little bit and we were talking about power factor? and we were talking about line voltage and all that. And if we want uh, maximum power transferred, we want the phase angle between the current and the voltage to be zero, right? And if they're not zero, right, as that angle between them uh, increases, increases, uh, then there's no time for power to be dissipated, right? So uh, you could think of, you've got voltage and current, they're perpendicular and they're just rotating around this phasor diagram. Uh, they never, ever, ever commingle because they're always perpendicular. The second that this angle decreases, then there's some power dissipation. So that's another way to think of it. So inductors and capacitors never dissipate power. Uh, ideal ones. Real ones, of course, do because they're made out of wire and they have all kinds of parasitic uh, components. So as a matter of fact, let's talk about that just for a second. All right, so uh, let's see here. So just real brief, a, uh, a capacitor, uh, a capacitor, an ideal one will never dissipate uh, energy, right? A real one. Uh, an ideal one, sorry, an ideal one will never, but a real one will, right? So now, why is that? Well, it's because of this. A capacitor really looks like this. So say that you have uh, a capacitor, and here's your ideal capacitor, right? What it really looks like inside is, is this. It really looks like this. It looks like there's a resistance here, right? And then there's a capacitor here, and then there's another resistance here, all right, and then if you really wanted to get, uh, if you really wanted to get uh, technical, then there's also, an, obviously, there's an inductance here, right? So the real capacitor 
uh, model looks like this. Resistor, inductor, then there's a capacitor, all right? And then on top of the capacitor, there's another resistor. This is really what this thing looks like. And so you've got this R1, you've got this R2, and you've got this L1, and then you've got this C0 here. And this all makes up this C. So the R1, what's that? That's the lead resistance, right? The L1, that's the lead inductance, right? The R2, this is the uh, kind of leakage resistance. There's going to be some, you know, the uh, dielectric is not perfect. It's going to have some finite resistance, maybe millions or billions of ohms, but it's still going to be there. The current's going to flow through it. So this is kind of what that model looks like. Now, for the inductor, so you will have power loss, right? You're going to have power loss where? Here and here, all right? And you can look those things up, and this, this one here is called the... Uh, uh, equivalent series resistance, for example, all right? And you want that to be low or you're going to get power loss in there. Now, an inductor, uh, for an inductor, uh, inductors are a little bit simpler. So if we have uh, an inductor like this, okay, that is the ideal model for the inductor, L, right? The uh, real model looks like this. There's a resistance and than the inductor, and this would be kind of this L0, and this would be this R1. And again, uh, there's typically no capacitance because there's really no parallel plates anywhere. There's no discontinuities in an inductor circuit, so there's really no parallel plates. Uh, but uh, you definitely do have lead resistance because it's made out of wire, and that's this R1, and then uh, and then L0 would be then you know uh, the actual inductor, uh, you know once you uh, uh, take all that away. So that's what it really is. And again, where are we going to get power dissipated? Right there. When we run current through this, we're going to get, you know, I squared R is going to be the power loss. And we're going to get that here, I squared R1, and we're going to get that there, and so forth, right? So that's why there is power loss. So these things are nearly perfect, but uh, not exactly perfect. So when you do calculations, uh, unless you have what, a perfect model of these things, right? You have a nice model of it, remember? And we, you know, SPICE model, the whole thing about SPICE, uh, uh, that model will then have these components in that for an actual manufacturer. And actual manufacturers will tell you what these values are if you really want to get that crazy. But if you want to get that crazy, you're probably overdoing it in the first place. All right, so that's what they really look like. So there really is power dissipated, but we're going to pretend for now they're not and they're perfect. And they're, uh, and the voltage and current are exactly 90 degrees apart in both of these devices, respectively, uh, for each one. All right, now, so now uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's continue on with this uh, con concept of uh, phaser stuff. So let's get this off here. All right. So, uh, all right. So we've got these phasers. And now let's talk about uh, reactants. All right. So let's talk about reactants. Okay. So uh, in, this, uh, in this circuit right here, when we have a resistor, right, R, its resistance, its resistance is measured in ohms right ohms and that's resistance and that's that all right and then we have this thing here ohms law v equals i times r now in a capacitor we also have uh, this concept of resistance all right now so if you recall in a capacitor they uh, block dc they block dc but they pass ac so in other words the lower the frequency they become a higher impedance or a higher resistance all right, and then as you increase the frequency, they become lower and lower and lower. All right, okay. So uh, what we call that is reactance, and so the capacitor reacts to this, and uh, and it doesn't want you to change things, and that's so it, it reacts to the uh, change in current. All right, and so uh, a capacitor has what we call reactance, which is also measured in ohms. All right, and again, where does reactance come from? It comes from when you try to push charge on here, little plus charges. Where are they? Here's our little plus charges. Try and put little plus charges on there, which then cause little minus charges on there. And then the more plus charges you get, it pushes against the plus charges you're trying to put on there. That's that reactance. That's that impedance to a current flow, right? And I'm using the word impedance here, which is also very special. And I'm going to get to that as well. All right, so uh, we have the C here. And so the question is, let's restate it. As we increase the frequency, our intuition that we've learned, as we increase the frequency, uh, current will flow easier and easier, right? As we slow it down, it completely blocks DC, right? It completely blocks it, right? It can't get to there. So as we increase it, 
as we increase the frequency, the impedance goes down. As we decrease it, it goes up. All right, so that means that uh, this thing that we're going to call reactants, and I'm going to put it down here, uh, capacit the X stands for reactants, capacitive reactants is going to equal 1 over, it's an inverse function, right? And, and it has something to do with frequency. It has something to do with the capacitance, probably. And that's it, 2 pi. So that couldn't be any easier. So capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi uh, Fc, or again, if you want to uh, talk about radians per second or angular frequency, it's even simpler. It's just omega C. That's it. And it's also measured in ohms, measured in ohms. All right, so that's capacitive reactance. Now, so take a look. Uh, at DC, F would be 0. So if F was 0, 1 divided by 0, that goes to infinity. So its, imp its resistance goes inf infinitely high. Now, if we make F bigger and bigger and bigger, so if we make F like a million, a billion, a zillion, a gajillion, 1 over that, 1 over a gigantic number, approaches 0, right? So as F goes up, X sub C goes down. As F goes down, X sub C goes up. Seems reasonable. Okay, now let's uh, let's uh, talk about an inductor. So let's draw an inductor over here, same thing, draw an inductor. And, you know, honestly, uh, I can draw capacitors, I can sort of draw resistors. Technically, most people draw inductors like this. They just draw them like that, okay? I always try to draw an inductor with an actual kind of, uh, like loop and it just turns out horrible do whichever one you want but uh you know you're probably going to be stuck with this your whole life so maybe you want to do this one because it just i don't know it seems a little bit easier to draw so uh, i don't want to give you any bad habits so i think you should probably draw them like that all right so here's l okay so now we have the same thing with the inductor uh, the inductor never dissipates energy we know what its model looks like uh, in, in reality, there's a resistor in there, but we're talking about ideal. Uh, the voltage in the current are 90 degrees uh, at a phase. All right, and so now let's use our intuition again and from what we know. All right, so the inductor, right, uh, the inductor, uh, as you increase the frequency, so if we put our AC source here again, right, and we start uh, pumping uh, uh, a signal in here, a frequency f. Forget the amplitude; doesn't really matter. The uh, the higher, the uh, the faster we change uh, the signal, or the higher the frequency, that means that the rate of change of flux is going to keep changing really, really fast. And as that flux keeps changing really, really fast, right? Uh, then what's that going to mean? That means that we're going to uh, increase this impedance here, because remember, as you increase flux, the reverse EMF occurs, and then it pushes back in the other way. So as the frequency goes up, the reactance goes up as, all, as well. So as the frequency goes up, as you change the voltage, the reactance goes up. So this is a linear relationship. This is an inverse relationship. This is a linear relationship. Ah, so I'm going to tell you that X sub L it's called. And so this is inductive reactance, capacitive reactance, inductive reactance. It's linear. So it's proportional to F, okay, and... L is in there. That's that's good. And guess what? There you go again, two pi, and that's it. And again, we can re rewrite that if you if you like uh, talking in terms of angular frequency omega. That's just omega L, right? And remember, omega equals two pi f. Okay, so that's it. So now, again, as frequency goes up, right? The inductive reactance also goes up. It's totally linear. And as frequency goes down, the inductive reactance goes down. So this is interesting. This is a frequency-dependent resistor, basically. As you increase the frequency of the signal, this goes up uh, linearly, right? So this is kind of really cool. So if we come over here and plot this, right? And uh, so if we plot, uh, say, here's F right here. And then up here, if we plot uh, X sub L, which is in ohms, right? So as the frequency goes up, the uh, uh, inductive reactance goes up, right? And it goes just like that. It's completely linear, right? 
And the slope of that line, the slope of that line has to do with the inductance, right? The inductance and the scaling factor of 2 pi. But that's it. It's just linear. Done. So that's really cool. So that is basically a linear uh, frequency dependent uh, resistor. Very cool. The capacitor is 1 over that, right? So it's 1 over that. So by the same token, you're going to get curves that look like this for the capacitor as a function of frequency. So you have these two curves, you can do whichever you know you want with. So again, you see their analog nature, not analog meaning analog and digital, but analog meaning kind of uh, uh, you know uh, symmetrical opposites here. All right, so, so there's the capacitor, uh, there's the capacitive reactance, there's the inductor, there's the uh, inductive reactance, all right? All right, we've taken a look at phasers, so now we kind of understand that. So now what we want to talk about is uh, with, in, in terms of, uh, of phasers, right, we talked about voltage and current. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about reactants in terms of the phasor diagrams, okay? So let's talk about that. All right, so now let's go here and let's get a different color here. All right, so now let's draw a phasor diagram of just the reactances, okay? And this will be, this will be cool. All right, so now uh, since we like the resistance uh, to be kind of the reference because I and, R, uh, I and V are in phase in the resistor. So typically what we'll do is we'll draw the, uh, we'll draw the, uh, the resistance, right? It's, it's uh, impedance or resistance. We'll draw that on the reference of here, of, which is at the zero degree mark. So we're gonna draw this R in this case right here. I'll draw it thick so you can see it against the uh, yellow, okay? So there's our R. Okay, cool. Now, uh, let's see here. Let's see here. I don't know. I, I, let's see. I feel, like, I feel like capacitance is blue. What do you think? I don't know. Is that blue? And I feel like inductance is red. Okay. All right. So the uh, capacitive, the capacitive uh, reactance, right, is always going to be uh, 90 degrees uh, the voltage is 90 degrees lagging, so it's it goes right here. So it goes right here. There we go. And so this is x of c. And guess what? Ah, we know how to compute it now, right there. That's the formula. It's just 1 over 2 pi fc. So we know actually how to compute it. And now here is the inductive reactance, x sub l. And we know how to compute that. It's just right there, right? So now, for a given frequency, we know how to compute these things, and we can draw this little uh, phasor diagram of x of l, x of c, and r, all right? And once we can do that, now what we can do is we can add r's and c's and r's and l's together in uh, single circuits, right? And we can do things with them, okay? So, uh, so I think, so why don't we do this? Let's just keep breaking this lecture up because we're kind of segueing into different uh, elements here. So let's just break this up into another, uh, another part and, uh, and then we'll continue. So let's stop now and we're going to pick up. And then when we pick up, we're going to talk about uh, RC, RL uh, circuits. We're going to talk about the reactants, all right? And uh, do, do some uh, calculations and run through some examples, which will be fun. Then after that, then we're going to generalize this into what's called impedance. And then we're going to, and impedance are based on complex numbers. We're going to generalize it a bit into impedance. And then that's going to help us finally with filters. But, but anyway, so take that in. And uh, I'll meet you in the next le lecture. And we're just going to kind of continue with this. But we're going to do some examples. But this is a good place to stop for now. And then uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick it up in the, uh, in the next uh, part of this lecture. OK? All right, see you then. Bye.